makes over $267,000. Many of the police officers make over $100,000. We would ask that they do the right things. And if they're going to protect the laws, that they protect the laws even from their own. Somebody is accountable for negligence in the death of Earl McNeil, and we want to know the names. We should know the names. This family found out two days ago that what Chief Manuel Rodriguez said on June 18th was a lie. He told them that Earl McNeil was up walking around talking to people in the booking station on June 18th. Also, when he was smirking, when the family was grieving, crying, he told this family that they did nothing to Earl McNeil. But what we learned from the Sheriff's Department, as Mark said, is that Earl McNeil had to be carried out of the SUV by eight sheriff deputies onto a gurney and never got up and walked and never spoke from what they could understand. This was the Earl McNeil that we found out about two days ago in lives of two meetings that were civil by this family. What we also found out is that the DA has the case what we also want you to question is conflict of interest because the DA also used Earl McNeil <coughs> as a confidential informant of which he was paid a total of $30,000 or more. Yeah. He may have been given drugs, he may have been given other amenities, and we want them to recuse themselves because that is like an employee. You have a conflict of interest, we are asking the FBI to take over the case. FBI takes over conflict of interest, we would ask that you ask the FBI why they are not involved uh, with this case. We would also ask that you find out about the over 20 cases Earl McNeil was a confidential informant in and that he interviewed, we have the private investigator here standing with us, Marie Little, who found out that he was being forced to lie in some of those, if not all of those cases. And there is an innocent man who stands accused, charged, and sentenced to 25 years to life and has been in jail, been prison, for 13 years now. And the DA knew he was innocent. We are asking you to ask them the hard questions, to ask them why is James Carter an innocent man incarcerated and to free him immediately. This is not justice. This is just us. We are being the ones that are being damaged and traumatized every day of our lives by these type of law enforcement and these type of district attorneys who will win a case of an innocent man and keep him there for 13 years. Who will brutalize a man who comes to talk on a phone and then act as if they did nothing wrong. Who will drag a black woman and slam another black woman on the ground as they were peacefully protesting their voices were the only thing that was loud. The violence that we have seen has come from National City and the law enforcement that came in riot for 30 bodies that were pushed out of this chamber because they witnessed us trapped and harmed. So we would ask that you guys ask the tough questions and that this city and this county do the right things because they have not, they have a history that you cannot sugarcoat of how they have treated black and brown people since the beginning of San Diego. Uh, we are going to have Yusef Miller come up next. Um, just real quick, I didn't give you my name, Mark Lane, M-A-R-K-L-A-N-E. Um, one of the other things I wanted to really make clear, there were two meetings with the NCPD with the McNeil family. And in both of those meetings, nothing was given to them in regards to information. Regardless of what Manny Rodriguez said, that the family was happy, they had a great day. It didn't happen. The Sheriff's Department gave us great information. <clears throat> Manny gave great information as well. Chief Rodriguez gave intimate details of the investigation to the CBS reporter that he wouldn't tell the family. He told the CBS reporter things that he told the family he could not tell them because it was an active investigation. So when you're listening to those things as, as reporters, you gotta say, why? Why didn't you say that to the family when they sat with you two different times? 
can't just listen to him peddle a story that he was probably given by a PR person to make them look better. You can't put lipstick on police brutality. Joseph Miller has been helping us all along. Seth Miller, Y-U-S-E-F-M-I-L-L-E-R. I'm with the Council on American Islamic Relations San Diego office and the Justice for Earl McNeil team. Earl McNeil came to San Diego uh, National City Police Department looking for aid, not abuse. He came looking for help, not a hearse. He came looking for uh, medical care. And what he received was brutality. And we're here frustrated that after his brutality and after his death, a character assassination was now in place. The family is re-traumatized. The family is hurting. And they see this on the news. And they see this in the press. And re-traumatized. Nobody cares about the feelings of the family. Earl McNeil is gone. And we're here fighting for the justice for family. And no one cares. So many red flags have been raised up about Earl McNeil the loss of his mother, the, che the checker flags of his criminal history, his mental stability. But where were those red flags when NCPD hired him to make cases against other people? Where were those red flags then? Where were those red flags with over 20 cases they used him and paid him? Where were those red flags then? Where were those red flags with James Carter is now serving a life sentence. Where was those red flags then? We want to bring them up now. We want to re-traumatize the families. But where were those red flags when it came to the employment of Earl uh, McNeil? Earl McNeil was suffering. He was in a mental state. He was looking for 5150 assistance, not abuse and not death. by this continuous abuse of the community by law enforcement. Earl McNeil was trying to redeem himself. He was trying to redeem his community and trying to redeem his past. There's two sides of Earl McNeil, and we only see one. We don't see the Earl McNeil that was trying to get his life together. The Earl McNeil that walked into that station was an Earl McNeil looking for help, trying to turn his life around. And all we hear about is his drug past, little Earl McNeil, teenage Earl McNeil, young 20s Earl McNeil. That's what we hear about. But we don't hear about current Earl McNeil, who had the chance and opportunity and deserved the chances to redeem himself, to redeem himself to his family, to redeem himself to himself, to redeem himself to his community. We don't see that Earl McNeil. All we see from the media, from NCPD, from the city council, is an Earl McNeil that attacked um, himself and attack the uh, law enforcement. This does not, this does not allow people to kill. Earl McNeil was a human being. We do not relegate his life to that of an animal that you can just tase and kill at will when you're tired of it and get rid of it. That shouldn't even happen to an animal. And it happens to Earl McNeil, a person of color. So many families of color receive the same treatment, the same brutalization and killing, and then covered up by character assassination, community assassination, race assassination. We will not stand for it.
Yes. And we won't stop until this type of treatment ends. Police officers, police departments are obligated to provide a service to protect and serve. It is a travesty. Thank you. 